Hey guys, this is Austin, and today I'm here with a budget gaming CPU comparison. So a question I get asked all the time is which is better, AMD or Intel? And while there's no real clear answer to that, it depends on what you're going to be doing, how much money you're going to be spending, all that kind of stuff, what we can do is compare some of the best budget gaming CPUs out there. So on the Intel side, we have the Core i3-3220, and on the AMD side, we have their new FX4300 CPU, as well as their A10-5800K APU. For my tests, I used two different graphics cards. So on the lower end, I used a Radeon 6850. Now this is very similar in power to something like a Radeon 7770 or a GTX 650 Ti. And in all honesty, this is probably about the same kind of power graphics card that's going to go in most systems with these CPUs. I also did all of my tests with a Radeon 7950, which is a much more powerful graphics card and should show more of the weaknesses and strengths of each of the CPUs. For the first test, I used the Firestrike benchmark inside the new 3D Mark. Now this is a very graphically intensive DirectX 11 title, which really destroys pretty much every CPU and GPU that you run it on. Here, the 6850 was clearly the bottleneck, as all three systems struggled to breach 10 frames per second for the most part. As far as the scores go, it was basically a dead heat, the Core i3 barely edged out the AMD CPUs, but really by such a small margin that I would basically call this one a tie. Moving on to the 7950, it's clear that Firestrike is very, very demanding on the GPU, as again, all three systems score fairly close. Moving on, we have Battlefield 3, which is still one of the best looking games out there. So for the settings on this one, we have the resolution set to 1080p and all of the graphics settings set to high. Now we could have pushed this a little bit farther, however I did want to make sure that I could get playable frame rates on both graphics cards. With the 6850, all three CPUs score within one frame per second of each other, which means that this is pretty much for all intents and purposes a tie. Now this is actually kind of interesting, as that it means that even with a graphically intensive game like Battlefield, we're still pretty much entirely limited by the graphics card and not the CPU. Moving up to the 7950, we start to see some more clear differences between the CPUs. So the 5800K starts to fall behind here, scoring right about 90 frames per second, whereas the FX4300 scores about 93, and the Core i3 scores about 97. So I wouldn't call this a huge blowout by any means, however it is still clear that the Core i3 does beat both of the AMD processors in this one. Next up, we have Far Cry 3, which is not only a very good looking game, but it's also a lot of fun when you're not benchmarking and doing the same thing over and over and over again like I was doing. As far as the settings go, here again we're playing at 1080p with all the settings set to high. With the 6850, here again we see almost the exact same story, as all three CPUs score very very close together. However, move up to the 7950 and you'll see it's a little bit of a different story. So the 5800K notches about 54 frames per second, whereas the FX4300 gets about 57 and the Core i3 gets about 63. So again, these aren't huge differences, but the Core i3 does edge out over the quad-core AMD counterparts. Next up, we have Skyrim, which is a famously CPU-intensive game. In fact, when it first came out, you basically needed a Core i5 or Core i7 to actually run it properly. However, now with the few patches, it has gotten better, but it still does very heavily tax your CPU. For this one, I installed the high-resolution texture pack and cranked the anti-aliasing all the way up and put all the rest of the settings at ultra. With the 6850, we see a slight lead for the Core i3. However, it's only about a frame and a half per second, which really isn't a whole lot. Move up to the 7950, and it's very clear that the 5800K starts to bottleneck things, with only 65 frames per second. The FX4300 does quite a bit better at about 77, however, again, the very clear winner is the Core i3 with over 91 frames per second. So you can call this whatever you want, maybe they're Intel biased or whatever, but regardless, if you're going to be playing Skyrim, the Core i3 pretty much smokes the AMD competition. Lastly, I wanted to look into power consumption. This matters in quite a few areas, including your power bill every month, the amount of heat that's being dissipated inside your chassis, as well as what kind of power supply you're going to need to buy with each of these builds. I did a run through of Portal 2 with the 7950, and I monitored the power consumption using a kilowatt. So the Core i3 did really well here, using only 220 watts, whereas the 5800K needed 257 watts, and the FX4300 needed 278. There are a couple of interesting things to take away from this. If you're going to be using an entry or mid-level graphics card, all three of these CPUs actually perform very nicely, as there really weren't any major differences in the games that I tested. Even when you move up to a more beefy graphics card, all three CPUs actually do a really respectable job. So yes, the Core i3 did typically pull ahead, but usually it was only by about 10% or so, which while it is a difference, it isn't massive. And the fact that all three of these CPUs could handle a pretty decent graphics card like this without any major problems was actually pretty impressive. Then there's price to consider. When I first started this comparison, all three of these CPUs were almost identically priced at about $125. However, since then, the FX4300 has seen a price cut of about $20. Now, whether this is permanent or not, who knows? But if it is, a $20 difference actually makes it a much more attractive option. As if all of that wasn't enough to confuse you guys and pretty much ruin the entire point of my comparison, there's also the fact that the AMD CPUs are overclockable. So with their stock heatsinks, you're really not going to be able to get a huge difference. However, if you do want to spend some money on an aftermarket heatsink, you can get a little bit more of a moderate over 
overclock, which could help narrow the gap between them and the Core i3. Although, of course, the power consumption is already really, really in the Core i3's favor, and with overclocking, it's only going to extend its lead there. So there you guys have it. While both AMD CPUs have their advantages, the Core i3 outperformed them both and took up about half as much power while doing it, making it the winner this time. If you guys are interested in more, feel free to check out some of my other videos, including my $600 PC build featuring the Core i3. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to leave this video a thumbs up, and if you're interested in more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Anyway guys, I will catch you next time.